so on the screen the first question is question number 127 the spread of living pteridophyte is limited and restricted to narrow geographical regions because of okay so uh, to understand the uh, you know pteridophytes limitation uh, to, with respect to the geographical uh, regions we need to understand the life cycle of pteridophytes okay so let's start and study some life cycle of pteridophytes okay so basically pteridophytes pteridophytes are also called as the first terrestrial plants containing vascular tissues okay so these are the first terrestrial plants with vascular tissues okay now uh, as you have uh, seen the previous life cycle of bryophytes uh, the main plant body was gametophytic but in case of pteridophytes you will find that the main plant body is deployed and sporophytic okay so here in case of pteridophytes you will find that the main plant body is a sporophyte now this sporophyte is deployed okay now the sporophyte body consists of true root stem and leaf structures okay and the sporophyte is also carrying sporophylls okay now this sporophylls the sporophylls Uh, consist of spores. These spores, the, the sporophylls, are present either on the leaflets or the leaves. Okay. Now you will see sometimes in pteridophytes there are uh, some leaf-like structures. On the on the abaxial region, you will find that there is presence of some dot-like structures. These are called as sorus or they contain spores. Okay. So these are the sporophyll structures that you see in the pteridophytes. Okay. Now uh, these sporophylls will now produce spores. The ploidy of the sporophyll is also deployed. Now, the sporophyll, which consists of spore mother cells, will develop, uh, which uh, divide into spores by the process of meiosis. So, there is a process occurring which is called as sporic meiosis. So, here the spore sploidy will be haploid. Okay. Now, most of the pteridophytes are homosporous. That means the spores that are formed are either the spores that are formed are either of same morphology or same type or it can be different uh, right like heterosporous okay condition so most of the spores that are produced in case of pteridophytes are homosporous but some examples of heterosporous pteridophytes are selagina and selvenia okay so now the spores will develop into prothallus this prothallus is also a gametophytic structure now prothallus is inconspicuous but small and multicellular structure which is also green and photosynthetic this gametophyte is uh, having a specific requirement uh, and the specific requirement is that it requires cool damp and shady place okay so uh, the specific requirement of gametophytic stage of pteridophyte is it requires cool damp and shady regions okay apart from this the specific requirement they also require water for process of fertilization okay so these two requirements that you see here for gametophyte is uh, the main reason why the pterophytes are uh, restricted to specific regions or localities okay now that the prothallus will develop uh, the prothallus or the gametophytic structure may contain uh, female and male sex or, or male gametophytic structures right so if a particular species of pteridophytes is homosporous then the male and female gametophyte will present on the same plant that is the condition is monoecious okay while as if we talk about heterosporous species the gametophyte will either uh, if the spores are formed from male spore or from different heterosporous condition then there is a gametophytic structure where one is one contains male uh, gametophyte and the other uh, plant or other gametophyte contain female gametophytes okay so here you will find that there is a dioecious condition okay so here uh, it can consist of anthridia and archegonia okay the male and female sex organ will contain anthridia and archegonia so here 
एंथ्रीडियम मील एंड आज फीमेल ओके नाउ द एंथ्रीडियम विल फॉर्म एंथ्रोजॉइड्स और मेल गैमिट्स विच आर फ्लैजिलेटेड नाउ फॉर द प्रोसेस ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन और फॉर द प्रोसेस ऑफ सिंग गैमी ओके फॉर द प्रोसेस ऑफ सिंग गैमी दे रिक्वायर अ मीडियम विच इज वॉटर एंड दिस स्पेसिफिक रिक्वायरमेंट इज वॉट इज हिंडरिंग द टेडोफाइट्स टू नॉट स्प्रेड इन टू वायरल लोकेलिटीज ओके सो हियर आफ्टर सिंगैमी दे विल फॉर्म जाइगॉड एंड आफ्टर जाइगॉड द एम्ब्रियो विल फॉर्म एंड एम्ब्रियो विल फॉर्म एंड लीड्स टू स्पोरोफिटिक फेस दैट वॉज ऑल अबाउट द लाइफ साइकल ऑफ टेडोफाइट स्ट्रक्चर सो लेट्स सी वॉट्स द एंसर ऑफ द क्वेश्चन ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर 127 ओके सो द स्प्रेड ऑफ लिविंग टेडोफाइट इज लिमिटेड एंड रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू नैरो जियोग्राफिकल रीजन बिकॉज ऑफ डिपेंड्स डिपेंडेंस ऑफ गेमिटोफाइट ऑन स्पोरोफाइट नो बिकॉज गेमिटोफाइट इज अ ग्रीन फोटोसिंथेटिक स्ट्रक्चर सो इट इज अ फ्री लिविंग स्ट्रक्चर इट इज नॉट डिपेंडेंट ऑन द स्पोरोफाइट सो फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इज इनकरेक्ट नेक्स्ट ऑप नेक्स्ट ऑप्शन इज गेमिटोफाइट that require cool damp and shady places to grow yes it's the main reason why tadophytes are not uh, you know spread throughout the terrestrial land or terrestrial localities okay so this option is true third option says no need of water for fertilization no because here the male gametophytes will produce male gametes that require water for the process of fertilization okay fourth option says the sporophyte which can grow only in dry condition no tadophytes are majorly found in cold damp shady places but some are some tadophytes are also there which are also present in sandy soils okay so this is not the correct option so here for this question the correct option will be option number 